Democratic Congresswoman Ilhan Omar of Minnesota has been formally removed from the House Foreign Affairs Committee. 218 Republicans voted to back the resolution removing Omar from the committee and condemning her for her past anti-Semitic comments for which she has apologized. One Republican, Dave Joyce of Ohio, a senior member of the Ethics Committee, voted present. All 211 House Democrats voted against Omar's removal. Omar spoke ahead of the vote, displaying a picture of herself of an, as a nine-year-old girl in a refugee camp and calling on her experiences as a refugee from Somalia. Representation matters. Continuing to expand our ideas of who is American and who can partake in the American experience, experiment, is a good thing. I am an American, an American who was sent here an American who was sent here by her constituents to represent them in Congress, a refugee who survived the horrors of a civil war, someone who spent her childhood in a refugee camp, someone who knows what it means to have a shot at a better life here in the United States, and someone who believes in the American dream and the American possibility and the promise and the ability to participate in the democratic process. The vote to remove Congresswoman Omar was along party lines, 218 to 211. Some of those 211 Democrats spoke out in defense of Congresswoman Omar, calling out Republican hypocrisy for not disciplining their own members. I think one of the things that we should talk about here is also one of the disgusting legacies after 9-11 has been the targeting and racism against Muslim Americans throughout the United States of America. And this is an extension of that legacy. Consistency, there is nothing consistent with the Republican Party's continued attack except for the racism and incitement of violence against women of color in this body. I had a member of the Republican caucus threaten my life, and you all and the Republican caucus rewarded him with one of the most prestigious committee assignments in this Congress. Don't tell me this is about consistency. Don't tell me that this is about an a, a condemnation of anti-Semitic remarks when you have a member of the Republican caucus who, have, who has talked about Jewish space lasers and an, an entire amount of tropes and also elevated her to some of the highest committee assignments in this body. This is about targeting women of color in the, in the United States of America. Don't tell me because I didn't get a single a time has expired. When my life was threatened. Thank you. She has never posted a video depicting herself decapitating and killing fellow members of Congress. She doesn't question whether a plane really smashed in to the Pentagon on 9-11. She does not wonder if school shootings in America are staged. She has not propagated the absurd notion that space lasers financed by the Rothschild family are the cause of wildfires in California. She has never equated vaccine mandates with Adolf Hitler. So um, it's pretty stark, uh, Michael Steele, the hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's such a great point by AOC that she actually had somebody, um, Gosar, uh, uh, threatening her life, uh, glorifying... Right. Uh, a, a, an image of her getting her head chopped off in in, in a cartoon, uh, and then you you go down the MTG things, uh, the killing, uh, the decapitating, uh, well the 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 the, the uh, all the other things, and the space lasers financed by Jewish families, um, and of course, of course, she's holding a gun. I think it was an AR-15 in an yeah. ad and said that she needed to go on the elector so she'd go on the offensive against the squad. Uh, and, and there was a picture of, of Ilhan Omar, AOC. I mean, it really is. Again, the, the hypocrisy is absolutely, absolutely crazy. And I will say, uh, uh, Congresswoman Omar made a couple of uh, statements that were considered anti-Semitic. She apologized for them. I must say they 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 certainly uh, were no worse, and I would say f uh, far less egregious than what we hear from Donald Trump. What we hear from uh, Donald Trump's 
uh, guests, dinner guests, what we've been hearing from the Republican Party over the, over the past five, six years, what we saw coming out of Charlottesville. This is, this is not a close call. It's not a close call. And in fact, um, when, you, when you step back and look at the egregious behavior of Republicans like uh, Taylor Greene and Boebert, you know, uh, particularly in Taylor Greene's uh, situation, not only, uh, you know, threatening with guns, showing these images, but attending, you know, rallies with Mr. Fuentes, you know, identified known Nazi. I mean, and one who had dinner with the former president of the United States. But this is all, this has nothing to do with any of that. <laughs> At the end of the day, this is Kevin McCarthy's payback. This is retributive politics. Um, there would have been nothing that could have been said. There could have been nothing done to prevent this from happening because it was ordained by Marjorie Taylor Greene and others in the, in the Freedom Caucus that if you become speaker, you take her out. If you come, become speaker, you take out Swalwell and others. So the reality now that we've done this, uh, that's a checkbox. That, that retribution, that's been paid back. Um, it is not how you govern. But again, this is what the American people said they were okay with because they voted them into power. So I'm not letting people off the hook here. All the plaintiff pleas from people about what happened here, you knew it was going to happen. They told you this is what they were going to do, and you voted for it anyway. So, yeah, you know, and all of this, all, I, I just, I don't, I'm tired of folks just sort of, you know, wanting to focus it ex exclusively on these, on the bad behavior of these members. These members are there because the American people put them there. Right. And you get the consequences from their behavior when you vote for it. I mean, it, it, this is, this is the way the democracy is set up. You don't like the behavior. You don't want to be governed this way. You don't put the idiots in charge of the House. They voted for him. You're, you're exactly right. Again, we, we can look at the members. We should look at the people who voted for him. You look at Boebert, who almost lost, but she won. Enough people voted for him. Yes. Here's a woman that a town hall meeting uh, went on a racist screed against, uh, against Ilhan Omar. Think about that. President of the United States, a fascist screed uh, at a rally saying she needed to go back to where she came from. Uh, I mean, all of these people attacking her, attacking AOC, and, 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 and Ilhan Omar is one who, who's stripped of, of her committee membership. I mean, the thing is, I know that this is far too, I know that this is far too difficult for Kevin McCarthy and other Republicans to understand, but we don't need people on the committees that all look like me and have my background and have my right. family's background and have my worldview and uh, my, my very, uh, uh, I think Mika might say, overly optimistic view of where, what America does at home and across the globe, Michael Steele. Uh, or, yep. or, or even people with your background or people with yeah. you know, tra traditional backgrounds that go on these committees it's good to have a woman who lived in a refugee camp, who survived, who survived a civil war, who may not have as, as, uh, as, as let's just say, traditional view about the United States of America as I do. I, I love I, I love the friction. I, I, I love when, when, when I love the debate. It's how we get better as a people. So, yes, Ilhan Omar says a lot of things that I disagree with. AOC says a lot of things I disagree with. Uh, that's America. And we stand with them this morning. We, oh, my God, we exactly. stand with them this morning. Not only do we stand with them, 100%. we stand with something much, much bigger than just them. We stand, again, with this intellectual uh, 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 diversity. This friction where we get on these committees and we fight. I, I had That's the not, point. not to go the on, not to, to go on too long, but you know, when when I was on the Judiciary Committee, 
Um, my gosh, Maxine Waters and I had some knockdown, drag out fights. We became great friends because of it. And yeah. we, we got to understand each other much better because of it. They have, they have, they have damaged Congress by doing this. And they have oh, made, yeah. it, they have made it an Congress. intellectually weaker place to work.